One of the great things about MATLAB is it has so many built-in functions already in the program. Now, I'm not gonna go through a whole list of functions here, but I am gonna help establish a common language about calling different functions. I've written a script here with some of the functions that we've already been using. So first, let's run the code. So as the user, I'd be running the code, I provided the data it asked me for, and then I see the resulting information. So let's come into the actual script. The first two functions we see are CLC and clear. Now let's, as a reminder, CLC clears the command window and clear clears the workspace. Both of these are examples of function calls with no input arguments. So I didn't have to provide any additional information in order to call this function. It runs based on its own information. I can provide clear with an input argument if I choose. So here I have cleared one variable specifically. I said clear added. That is another way you can use clear, but typically you might just be clearing the entire workspace. The next line of code here on line four, we see I call the input function. So I'm calling that function. In order to run the input function, I do have to provide information. So I can't just run input on its own. It says not enough input arguments. In this case, I have one input argument. So my input argument is this. And sometimes people get confused because the user's providing a number as the answer. So they think it's a numeric input argument, but that's not the case. This is a character array or a string. So the type of input argument for input is a string. I need a prompt with that input function. So here I have an example of one string input argument to run the input function. Now, if I wanted to use the same input function to say, let's say favorite color and I answer blue, it doesn't work. So the blue is text and this input function is only gonna work for numbers. So let's say I definitely want the favorite color from my user. Well, I can add a second input argument and this is what it always will be, this apostrophe S apostrophe. Now I can collect strings. So if I say the color blue, that'll work. The next part of my code, you'll see line seven. And here I'm just adding together two pieces of information and storing it in a variable. I'm not calling any functions here. So this doesn't have any examples of a function call. The next place I have a function call is down here on line 10. So here I'm calling the fprintf function. In this case, I only have one string or one character array as my input argument. So in this case, again, there's only one input argument. Down here on my next fprintf on line 13, I have a string again, but then I also have added. So I have two different input arguments and you'll notice those input arguments are separated by a comma. And if you notice below, same thing. So your input arguments are going to be separated by commas. In this case, this one is again, it's a string. And the second one is a variable. So I have to go to the variable to think about what type of data it is. And added is a numeric value. So this is a string input argument and a numeric input argument. 